Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on the course of computational finance. Today we have question number 11 that is based on the materials discussed in lecture number 5. Today's question is, how does the so-called ETHOS table look like if we include the Poisson jump process? So we know already from uh, uh, by application of ETHOS lemma to processes uh, involving Brownian motion, how to define the corresponding stochastic differential equation. So in the sense that if we have a some process, let's say x, t, and we are considering a function of this process, so we have a function g of x, t, then in order to find the dynamics for this new process, we have to apply Ito's lemma. And Ito's lemma, in summary, it is a, a Taylor expansion in which we will apply Ito's table. Ito's table for a Brownian motion, so in the processes uh, where we have only Brownian motion is as follows. So we have a dt term here, dw term here, dt here, dwt here. So if we have a cross terms of dt terms, then we simply take zero. If it's a dt term uh, multiplied with a Brownian motion or dwt, then we also have zero. The same is because, of course, it is symmetric, so this will be zero. And then uh, dwt term squared, it will be simply dt. So this is the table that needs to be applied in a uh, simply set Taylor's expansion of function g. So we would apply Taylor's uh, um, uh, expansion to function g. We would apply Ito's table, and that would be the resulting stochastic differential equation for a new function g. So this is very common that we uh, uh, that we apply this technique is a very powerful and it's very important in finance because we may have some, let's say, a driving process uh, and then we will are looking what is the, the dynamics of the function of that process. So, for example, if you will have an a X process would be a, just arithmetic Brownian motion and we take an exponent of that would be geometric Brownian motion and to find the dynamics for the exponent of X, T, we need to simply apply Ito's lemma. Of course, now the second question is, okay, so we know how this ethos from ethos lemma, we know this table uh, and we can apply it to this expansion. So then we know the process for uh, g x t. But the question now is, what happens if we are not only dealing with a Brownian motion, but we are dealing with a Poisson process? We have some pr uh, process which is also included in the dynamics of x. So in this case here, we so let's here we could simply say we have dxt would be some drift xt dt plus let's call it wt. So this is a standard. Uh, let me correct here. We will have Brownian motion sigma dwt. So this is what we can apply. For example, this is for the for the ethos table. But now we have additional term. Let's call it a sigma hat, and then we will have a Poisson process here. So the question is, how this table, because this table also needs to include additional uh, process, so this will be Poisson process, so x, I call it Poisson xt. The question is, what are the terms here, 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 and here? How this table will look like. So let's take a look at uh, what exactly, how this jump processes work. So, um, in, uh, in this case, we consider a Poisson jump process. So uh, we have, uh, um, if we look at it, this dxpt can be considered one. So this is infinitesimal small interval of time. Then the jump will occur. So we have one jump happening at every point in time. Of course, in practice, once we talk about discretized uh, processes, then this will be a Poisson process on the interval dt. This means it's all, not only one a jump can happen, but for example, multiple jumps in the whole interval. But theoretically, if we talk about an infinitesimal small interval of time, then only single jump can take place. And then we have uh, two uh, very interesting, very important uh, notations. So we have a x t minus and x t. This is related to so-called Cadillac processes, and those are um, this is the definition that is important to be familiar with in the context of jump processes. Functions that is Cadillac is a function which is uh, continuous from the right side, but has a limit from the left side. So this is a function where it looks like follows. So we have here 
this point is excluded and then it continues on the right side. And this is this is the example of a so-called Cadillac function. This is, can be associated, for example, with a, a deterministic a CDF, so called cumulative distribution function. So what happens is that we will we are at time t minus. So this is the point we are here, but we are not this point. But this is time here, and t minus is time just before uh, time t. So this is this is time t, and this t minus is means we are epsilon close to time t from the left side, but we are not at time t. So it's very very small interval, a uh, small time before, just before. So then if we consider uh, function g x t, uh, and then we have also uh, function j uh, hat, which determines us the uh, the size of a jump. So this could be some deterministic function, or for example, like in the case of a Merton's model, it could be just a normal distribution, for example. So here, how this function g of x is defined, you have a g of t, so this is a point time t here, would be value of a process. So keep in mind that this is a one big bracket here. This is important to keep in mind. And then, so this is this argument. First, second argument is xt, and this xt is equal to value of a process observed at time t minus plus the jump, jump size of a, this is this function of a jump, which happens just before it's observed, it's at value at time t. However, this value is of a process xt is observed just before. So it's a function of this this point here. So you see, we are dealing when we are dealing with uh, jumps, it's everything happening in a very small interval, uh, infinitesimal close times t. So this is the, the main principle, how those jumps processes are included in uh, stochastic differential equations. And now is the question, how this process of function g will look like? For that, we need to apply Ito's lemma, or we have adopted the Ito's lemma for this type of processes. So this is the uh, Ito's lemma for Poisson process. So if we have some process xt, we have a, which has a drift as a function of uh, xt, then we have a j uh, bar, which is some deterministic uh, function, and then we have Poisson process. So this, this part determines, tells us what is the jump size, and this part tells us whether jump happens or doesn't happen. And this, of course, can be a function of xt, but this is determined at time t minus. Um, okay, so if we apply Ito's lemma to this, then we end up with this expression. So this is, again, we consider here a function of xt, and we are interested in finding what is the dynamics of this new process. And this type of derivation, so this is not only theoretical discussion how to find these dynamics, it is very important to know it because in many scenarios, especially if you deal with, for example, with Merton's model, of Byte's model, then we need to find those dynamics. We need to find this dynamics. So this information is, um, this knowledge is, is very important. So, okay, so if you apply Ito's lemma, then we see uh, it looks slightly different compared to Ito's lemma for Brownian motion. So note that this, in this case, we don't have any diffusive, diffusive part. This is only jumping part, right? So we have only uh, the drift of the process and the jump size, jump part, corresponding uh, to the Poisson process. So there's no continu continuity here. We, it's only pure jump uh, jump process. Uh, and I only include here jumps without any diffusion, just to make you, uh, just to explain clearly what is exactly happening in the Ito's lemma. In the next slide, I will also include Brownian motion, which will be much more realistic case if we talk about, for example, modeling of stocks, where we have diffusive part, where, let's say, when the market behaves uh, in a quiet, continuous environment, and then if something happens, then we have jump, we add on the top of a, of a Brownian motion. So here, what we have, uh, this would be d, g, t, x, t. Then we have, again, drift term, so d, t term. And so this is simply the derivative with respect to time. Then we have a drift, which comes mu. The derivative with respect to x, so this is just very similar to what we have seen in the Ito's lemma for Brownian motion, when dealing with Brownian motion, we note that we don't have any second order terms. So normally for Brownian motion, you'd also have half, then we have a sigma squared, and then second order derivative of g with respect to x squared. So this term is not there if we are dealing with Poisson process. It's only the, the first order derivative. 
And then we have second part, which is uh, similar to what we have seen in the case of brown emotion. We have a, a dxpt, and then we have a function. The difference of a function, so this function g, uh, before the jump and after the jump. So this is the case after the jump minus just before the jump. So this is the increment, how much jump uh, between time t minus and t, what is the magnitude of this jump as a function of g. So this is basically it. So if you look at the table itself, because uh, Ito's lemma is one thing, but of course we uh, practitioners, if you want to derive the stochastic differential equation for function g, it's very handy to understand, to know what is the Ito's table so we can easily apply it to uh, Taylor's expansion on function g. So this is the Taylor's, uh, th this is the Ito's table. So this is part we have already seen. And then we have a cross term of a dxpt. dxpt, surprisingly, is not dt. It is also the process dxpt. So if we multiply two increments of Poisson process, we still get Poisson process, the increment of Poisson process. So let's take a look what is the motivation for that, or what is the intuitive, uh, the, in the way of understanding what exactly happens here. So if we have a dxpt, uh, which is uh, a one tells us jump, what happens with, uh, we have one jump with probability, this is the intensity times dt, and we have a no jump with one minus that probability, then this basically means that if we look at the square of Poisson process, so we take this first realization squared with probability dxpt, then we have a zero, this term, with this probability, so one minus uh, xi p dt. And then what we, what we see is that if we take square of one is just simply one and zero squared is zero, so this is exactly what is the definition of a dxpt. So if we square dxp, we end up with a dxp. So this is this is the reason why we have this term here, and the rest is zeros coming from the from the Ito's uh, from the Ito's uh, lemma. So this is the extension. This is the extra term that you have to keep in mind once you are dealing once we are dealing with a, a Poisson process. So this is this additional term in Ito's table. So this is the answer to the question. What we can do next is to um, not only look at the Poisson process as a jump process, but we also have diffusion part. Diffusion part. This means that we are not only looking at this term, but we also have to include those extra terms. This means that we will also, in this case, we end up with this extra uh, cross term. There's a second order derivative of g with respect to x t. So this is the term that we were missing in a pure uh, jump process. And then we end up, we have this uh, part which comes for Brownian motion, and then we have additional term which comes for Poisson process. So overall, application of, um, let's say, dealing with uh, jumps, uh, and it is rather straightforward, but we have to keep in mind that if we look at the product of two uh, Poisson processes, then we end up with this cross term. And this is actually the, the key element of the, uh, the application of uh, Ito's lemma to jump processes. Um, I hope it's, uh, it's clear and uh, it is extremely powerful uh, machinery, the, jump, the uh, ethos, ethos lemma for jumps. And if you are experiencing, if you are dealing with uh, stochastic processes, knowledge about uh, ethos lemma and applications of ethos lemma is very fundamental. So this is very important to, to dive into the details presented in this answer. And in more details you will find in lecture number five and of course in the book. See you next time. Bye bye.